Ivy. This is Adele from the Yarn Creations podcast and Yarn Creations on Facebook and my Yarn Creations on Instagram. This is a podcast about knitting and crochet. I'm still trying to find my way with the English, but I will try my best to get better every time. I live in Pretoria in South Africa and we are in the midst of winter now. It is quite cold here, not snowy cold, but it is chilly. It's, it's cold enough to wear shawls and cowls and cardigans. Last, uh, As I said in my previous podcast, last winter it wasn't cold at all, but this winter it is really quite cold. And my house is very chilly. We don't have central heating. I don't. There's no houses in South Africa that has central heating because our winters are so short, and we've got long hot summers. So uh, I just have to wear some thick clothes in my house and keep myself warm with activity. I really want to do this podcast before I'm leaving for the farm for a while because when I get back, in, uh, it, I'm also very busy getting everything in my house in order again and um, on the farm I don't have any internet connection and I don't want to leave it for another three weeks. I really want to try and I know I said every two or three weeks but that doesn't seem to be possible so I will try really I want to try and commit myself for at least once a month uh, because I, I really enjoy doing the podcast and I enjoy the interaction with with you with my viewers and I really want to thank each and every one who left a, such a nice comment on my previous podcasts I do I really appreciate it and I appreciate the interaction with you and because I've got a passion for what I'm doing and I really like sharing it with you and it gives me so much pleasure when you uh, say that you enjoy what you see and um, I would very much like for you to keep on interacting with me and tell me if there's anything I should maybe say more about or give more details because um, I, I don't want to make my podcasts too long. So I may leave out some uh, details that you think might be important for me to share. So please tell me if there's anything else that I should add to my, the projects that I'm discussing. And thank you very much for uh, you if you are a returning viewer. Welcome back. And if you are a new viewer and this is your first time, I hope that you like what you see and that, that you would um, subscribe to my podcast so that I can get more viewers for each and everyone who subscribes and who gives me a, a thumbs up. That gives me um, more, um, uh, more some other people who uh, watch the same kind of podcasts will then um, hopefully see that I've also got a podcast and then I will get more subscribers that way. So let's start. As I say, this is about knitting and crochet and yarn. <laughs> I love yarn. We've got really, really beautiful yarns here in South Africa, hand-dyed yarns. I love working with natural fibers. So um, that is mostly what you will see on this podcast. The, what I'm wearing is the Land of Sweet Skull by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. This is such a lovely, soft and comfortable item for me to wear in our weather because it is not very, it's not too chunky. As I said in one of my previous podcasts when I discussed, um, when I, um, after I finished it, um, I didn't make the all the repeats I didn't do all the repeats of the cowl so it's perfect for our weather and because it's a cotton uh, bamboo blend 
True Blend from One of a Kind Yarns. It's not that uh, heavy to wear. It's actually very perfect for today. It's a little bit bet better weather-wise. We ha really had some cold, but I think it's getting a little bit better. So this is the perfect day to wear it. The shawl behind me. That is the uh, Adventurous Wrap by Amber O'Brien. And I did it with the Miss Lamotte singles, Merino singles. It's really soft and it's so beautiful. I, I really enjoyed making it. I loved working with the yarns. I only used seven colors. The pattern, there's two versions in the pattern. And the one version's got, I think, 25 colors because because it's made for the adventurous Advent um, mini uh, singles that a lot of the indie dyers make in December month. But I only put seven colors together out of my stash and I really enjoyed it. And most of those colors that I used um, in this shawl that was leftovers, I'm using in this a log cabin blanket that I'm making that I, I'm really trying to make some progress on it and I showed it to you last time it has it is bigger now it has grown quite a lot so I'm also using, using the um, Miss La Mod singles in this, two strands held together at all times and I'm doing it with a half double crochet. I love the texture and, and the feel of this. It's not going to be a very big blankie uh, because I'm just using the stash that I've got um, and colors that go well together. I've got some other Miss La Mod singles but they are a perfect little sets and I don't want to use them in this blanket so I'm just using my odd skeins and um, in this color range, the pink and the green and a little bit of orangey yellow color that I'm using. I just love the half double crochet. I really can't get enough of the texture and the feel of this blanket. So um, it, it will be a, a, for a little girl, for a, a cot or a, 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 on the for a bed, for a single bed. I will see how, how big it will get at the end. I will just have to stop when my yarn is finished. I've still got uh, quite a few. I can maybe do um, two rounds. I think I will have enough to do two rounds more on this blanket. Because it's the logs. Because it's a log cabin. It's just a continuous log cabin. So um, you go, you do one side and then you turn and then you do the second side and then you turn and then, then you do the third side and you turn and you do the fourth side. It's so relaxing and mindless kind of crochet. I really love doing that when just sitting in front of the television and watching one of the episodes in one of my favorite series or when... We are sitting together drinking coffee and my husband, he likes to have my attention when he chats to me. So then this is, I don't have to count. I can just, really it's a mindless kind of crochet to do. I really enjoy it very much. And I'm using a, a four millimeter tulip uh, crochet hook, my favorite crochet hooks. So it's two strands of merino singles. At the moment I'm using uh, this one. No, sorry. Let me just quickly get them out. I'm using the two pink colors together. As you can see, I think they are both in that wrap. What's interesting to me and what I enjoy seeing when using the two strands. If you have a color like this green, is very, it's a very strong bright green color. And you can really tone it down with one of the lighter colors. For example, if you use it with that color, 
with this lighter, much lighter color with the little green specks and pink specks in it. Or with uh, even this one that's also a very light color. If you combine those two, it tones down the green completely. You can't believe it. Um, I will try and show you. In this one, I've used a, a, a more little bit of a yellow color with the, with the green in this last uh, log. I think I used this this yellowy color with the green because there is some of the yellow in this skein and then with that one bed it toned it down completely and here as well I used it with the pink the skein with the pink speckles in and it also toned it down completely so that is what I enjoy. I think uh, when you are crocheting or knitting a project with a very simple stitch, you can really play with your colors and the, the pleasure and the, uh, how can I say it, it's just so enjoyable to just see what you can create with the colors you are using together. So each, each log is it's, it's a pleasure to make. So that's a log cabin baby blanket I'm making. Uh, what? Okay, this is not, there's no order in this podcast as usual. I haven't got notes. All I had notes for is to remember to thank everybody for their lovely comments and to say welcome and I think I did that. What I've finished and what you've probably seen over and over on my Facebook page and on my in, um, Instagram uh, account is the knitted log cabin blanket. That is finished and it is so soft and so lovely. I think it is really one of those blankets that you can cuddle under in the winter and it's really, I love it. I, I will gladly make another one if I can find the time <laughs> there's so much to make on my to-do list and I so I really I will immediately start another one I've got so many ideas and give me so much pleasure to, to see the other log cabin blankets in the making from the workshops I present and the one I can't they are all beautiful and the combination of the mohi and the yarns that uh, the people are using is so beautiful so they are all so lovely but mine is finished and I love it to bits it's definitely big enough to put to cover your whole body when in front of the television and it will be beautiful on a bed I think uh, the, the as I said in my previous podcast what I used is merino lace singles uh, three strands held together or two strands of merino lace and a lace of moe We've got a very a lovely Maui here, the African Expressions Hope. That's not so expensive because you don't want to really use the very expensive kit Maui silk. Uh, that will make your blanket quite expensive. This is already uh, quite a pricey blanket. I don't mind. But uh, I, don't, and I, I think that the Maui, the Hope from African Expressions is perfect for this kind of blanket, to knit this kind of blanket. And I also used, as I said before, uh, some other strands some in some of the logs or in some of the parts um, alternated with the merino lace singles. Just uh, uh, this one with a little uh, lurex in, some lurex, uh, very thin lurex strand in. So it's got a little bit of glitter, just 
patches, not a lot, just uh, I think there's mostly two logs in a square. Two of the nine logs has got uh, some of this uh, one of a kind yarns, uh, cotton viscose with a luric strand in, so it's not out too much. You don't want it to to be a too much of a blingy blanket. And I really wanted to do an eye cord uh, edge for this blanket, but at the end I just didn't think that I'm up to doing an eye cord I caught uh, edge for the whole blanket. So what I did is, I think maybe um, I could have, it's maybe a little bit too tight, but I think uh, this blanket hasn't been rinsed or blocked yet. So maybe if I block it, it will be fine. I used only two strands of the lace singles and I crocheted uh, uh, a, a row of single crochet around the blanket and then another row of single crochet. I think I did uh, yes, I did a, a back post single crochet around the first row of single crochet. The second round was a back post single crochet and I think that looks quite Similar to an eye cord bind off. I must admit, I'm very happy. I think it's not too bad. And I will definitely use that again for a fake eye cord bind off or an eye cord edge for a blanket. I, I used a smaller needle as well. I, I knitted the blanket with 4mm needles. And I used a 3mm crochet hook for the edge. I could have maybe used a 3.5, but I was so scared that um, the blanket will be wobbly or be, that it will stretch out the, the knitting too much. But this is definitely, a, um, it will definitely secure the blanket. And, and it's fine. I, I'm not, it's, it's not that tight. I can still stretch it out. So it's not really puckering or anything. And um, what I was worried about, um, in retrospect, I think that I could have just, uh, what I did is I did the three panels as I showed in my previous podcasts. What I should have done maybe is just uh, join the nine squares the same way, but not right throughout. And then add a log cabin panel around the whole blanket but I didn't do that I did the three um, panels and I did the sides of that panels as well so when I uh, when it was completed the edge here didn't look so neat to me from where the the, the edge of where the two panels are joined so that is why I wanted to do a, just a small edging to close that up and I think I think it's okay now I'm happy I used some of the some of the um, skeins of lace singles I used them completely I finished them there's not even I think there's like little pieces like this left because at the end I had I was a bit worried um, one of the skeins that I thought that I can use with the two strands of the black was much more it showed more than the in than the lace singles I used in the other panels and I don't want one panel to be brighter with this joining strips than the other two so I really had to use those little pieces that was left completely and I just uh, alternated them all throughout the panel and it worked out okay it worked out well I, I searched in my stash and I found a small uh, I also had a little some of the at the end I, I had to use some of Linda's treehouse I've got a lot of her lace singles that I'm using for my workshops and luckily there was a gray a dark gray with lighter gray mixed in a skein 
and I used some of that at the end alternated with some of the other lace symbols just to even all the colors out a little bit so it, at the last panel uh, involved a little bit of more planning to get it all more or less the same color throughout the whole blanket. I hope that makes sense. That's a lot of, I don't know, I hope, I hope you understand what I'm telling, trying to tell you, trying to say. But I'm very happy with the all over feeling of this blanket. If ever you can make something like this, do it. It's so enjoyable and you won't be bored for one second because you are changing colors all the time and you're ch changing the lace color within every log and the uh, moe changes the colors completely so every log is just a pleasure to make. So that is my log cabin blanket, one large FO that you have seen from podcast number one. Those that are watching from podcast number one, you have seen it throughout till podcast number seven. But this is the last time. I promise it is finished. The, the only time you might see it is when it's on the chair behind me. This is my Hexi Love Actually blanket that I made um, two years ago, I think. And I've posted a picture recently where I've washed it again and it is one of my most favorite makes as well. Okay, um, then I, I'm not going to do that long a podcast. I don't want to go over the time again because I struggle too much to get the uh, different videos to sync. And um, I don't have a lot of time before we leave for the farm. And I really hope that I that this uh, podcast, this episode, will be um, okay, so that I don't have to do it again. That, like most of the times, because I don't really have the time for that now. And um, to upload it takes ages. Um, I've discovered that our upload speed is really a problem, and we are waiting for fiber for them to install fiber here, and maybe then it will be. A little bit easier to upload a video on YouTube. So uh, one thing I know that you are all waiting for and I'm going to show that so that I know that I've shown it when I see time is running out and there's one or two things that I haven't shown you that can wait till next time that's no, not so important. What is very important is the prize that I want to give away when I've got 200 subscribers. So please, guys, thank you so much for you that shared my, my podcast. Cast. I really do appreciate that. And uh, I really hope that we can get up to 200 subscribers soon because I so want to give this yarn away. It's so beautiful. Uh, I was gifted this yarn by Lily from Wishbone Yarns. You can really go and check her out. I will probably, uh, when I've got 200 subscribers, I will probably ask you again to go and check out her uh, online shop. She's got beautiful yarns, really. It's every skein is a piece of art. So I'm going to show this to you now without further ado. It's three skeins. This is the one skein. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous. I think what, uh, let me just put it closer and then you, maybe you can see. It is really, really beautiful. This is the um, Wishbone Solo, 100% uh, Merino. Wishbone. So this is the one skein. This is absolutely my colors. I'm going to write down this, the name of this color and one day I will ask Lily to make more of them. They are so beautiful. So this is the 100% Merino skein. The second skein is a, a wishbone solo with a hint of linen, 90% Merino and 10% linen. The name is, oh, the name of this one is Slow Gin 
and then the second one's name with a 10% linen is Plum Dandy. Oh, isn't it just gorgeous? It's, and you can see the, the specks of linen in the, in the yarn. So that is the second skein. And then the third skein. This is really... I know I'm going to have so much pleasure give, giving this away. And as I said in my previous podcast, but this is so my taste. And I don't know how Lily knew it to send me yarn. That will be difficult for me to give away. But I'm really going to give it away with happiness in my heart when I've got 200 subscribers. The, second skin, the third skein is a wishbone gloss sock. It's a 70% extra fine merino and 30% tassa silk. It is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Just look at it. It is the most beautiful yarn and little, you can see it's got, you can see the silky, silkiness in the yarn. I'm sure that you will agree with me that this, all three of these skeins are just beautiful. And I so really, I so want to give it away to one, one lucky winner will get all three skeins. I don't want to separate them because I think that they uh, will, they go really well together and this will make a beautiful shawl. I, I think it will be so, so beautiful. And then I'm also adding uh, the stitch markers that I will add from me. This will be from me. The three skeins is from Lily and this will be from me. This is made by a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine's daughter, Janke. She makes them and sells them. And I, I wanted to put them... Um, together with this package because of the colors. I think the colors goes perfectly with the skeins, don't you think? So this prize will go to one lucky winner. Oh, I'm so excited, really. I can't, I can't tell you enough how excited I am that I am able to give this away. And I want to thank Lily once again. Go check out her shop in the meantime. She's got lovely, lovely yarns. And I heard that the, uh, the uh, post office strike is over. I really hope so because they do ship overseas, but they use the post office. And I heard that the post office strike is that they've reached some sort of agreement and that they have stopped. So that is the yarn that I will give away to one lucky winner. As soon as I've got 200 subscribers. So keep on watching so that you will not miss the episode where that is happening. So give a thumbs up and if you know of anybody that wants to subscribe, tell them. And keep on sharing please so that I can give 200 subscribers the chance, at least 200 subscribers the chance to win this yarn. Uh, something else I can show you that I'm still busy with. I've shown it to you last time I just started it. It's the Walk the Block Scarf by Reza Knits. Uh, it's a very interesting knit. And um, I've, it was a mystery cow, but I didn't, um, I didn't do it um, in that time range of the four weeks. I started late and I had some, uh, the log cabin blanket I wanted to finish first. I've completed week one and two and I'm now busy with week three, these four weeks. So that's my phone ringing and I will just um, ignore it and phone back whoever is trying to reach me so this is the first part I think last time I was only I only did this first few 
short row sections. I'm using all the yarns I'm using is from one of a kind yarns um, so far. I've got one, the one skein I showed you last time from Miss Lamotte yarns. It's uh, all the sock white yarns. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that color, but uh, I will see as it progresses because I'm just using what I feel that works and because I don't have the colors that she has that she shows in the I can't show you a picture there is some pictures on Instagram now of the of the shawl but uh, there's no picture on the um, pattern or a photo on the pattern because it was a mystery cow but this is now so what I've completed them is that part and then these short row parts then there's some uh, flowers in a row that are so so cute and I'm using this really red that I tried to show you last time it's still very overexposed it's still very difficult to show you the color it's not getting um, on the screen as it should so there's the little red pops of flowers and then that I've completed there's some eyelid rows and here I struggled a bit my colors are not exactly placed as she uh, um, prescribes in the pattern but I'm not too worried I still like it um, I'm introducing this lovely turquoise dark turquoise color and then um, I've I've brought in I think this is also yeah this is also then a new color that I've used here little section of also a wedge it looks like a wedge and then I've repeated to to try and um, of course I'm not using the colors like in the pattern I'm trying to make it that there's some sort of pattern in my color placement and now I'm going to use this green teal color again for I think it's another uh, eyelet wedge eyelet wedge that has to be done so this is thing what I have completed so far a very pretty and a very interesting and busy knit but it's going to be a scarf and then it will need some serious blocking because I think the one edge is supposed to be straight and then the other edge um, is um, it's getting wider and then narrower again so you will uh, I will have to find luckily I got some blocking wires from uh, Mariki from Colors of Amalfi and I think I will need them to when I'm going to block this so this is a straight edge here and as you can see the other edge is growing and um, I think it's getting narrower again now I'm not sure but I think I'm going to take this to the farm with me uh, I'm just I'm only taking some whips not going to start anything new so this will be the one thing that's going and then the other last thing, I think it's the last thing I'm going to show you. Uh, the other day I just couldn't wait anymore. I've started, uh, uh, I really want to do the color work. I'm very excited uh, about doing some more color work. And I, uh, there's quite a few pa patterns in my rivalry library and everywhere and ready to start to be started with but I just want to get some more practice in the color work section so I started the it's the top down lit loppy vest uh, there's not a nice picture on the pattern and I've only printed it in black and white um, but there you can see there's the name you can see the name it's a free pattern so I, I really don't think it's I think it's okay to show it like that and it's a vest it doesn't have any sleeves and it's just got the, the color work yoke and then it's plain uh, I think what I can show you is a, uh, an, uh, a screenshot I made from the rivalry page 
if I can just get this to open on my tablet, then I can show it to you. Oh, sorry, <laughs> it changed. Let's start again and try and find it. Try not to touch anything now. I love it. I think it's a really, really pretty little vest to uh, wear over a t-shirt. There's the name. The original pattern is bottom up, but there is a top down version now. And I will put all the names, as you know, I put all the names um, in the um, down below the video. So you can just go and, and search for it and you will really find it easily. This is a free pattern. Uh, this page is on Ravelry, but uh, you have to follow the link to the, I think it's, the pattern is on the um, Lopi Yarn website. I think you will find it there. Yeah, the Eastex Lopi website. You will find the pattern. There's one or two other uh, free patterns as well. So this is what I finished the color work yoke. all scrunched up I love the design it's a very nice design and I'm using uh, this was uh, South African pure new wool but unfortunately it was discontinued a long time ago and I've got this for quite a while and I bought it for almost next to nothing when uh, after it was discontinued it was um, all on special um, in the, some of the yarn shops. It was uh, made by L or dis distributed by L. Pure, pure new wool. It's really very soft. It's so soft and it knits up beautifully. It's got very nice stitch definition. I think maybe a lot of you might, if you are in South Africa, you might still have some of that in your stash. <laughs> this is the, the dark the petrol blue color, I'm, this is my main color, and this is the other lighter color I'm using. And then I had to go and do some stash diving to find something to match, because I really wanted a lighter color to um, in, the, in the color work part. And I found this uh, hand-dyed merino from one of a kind yarns uh, that's got light blue uh, patches in it and I think that really worked perfectly together with these two so this is the yarns that I'm using and I finished the yoke and I think it went quite fast uh, uh, what I did is uh, the, the original we, you start with a seed stitch but I did a two by two rip and I, uh, I'm making the large. It's for, I hope it will fit my daughter-in-law. I think she will really look pretty in it. I hope she's not watching this. I don't think she is uh, because I, I haven't told her yet that this is supposed to be for her. So that if, if it doesn't fit her, uh, somebody else will probably get it or if it really very big I can keep it for myself but I I think I think it will fit her I'm sure it will and and it's the kind of uh, cardigan or wearable that she will I think she will use it I, it's uh, very I like the, the style with the with the long sleeve vest uh, t-shirt underneath so it doesn't have sleeves so it's a fast knit I think it will be a fast knit because this is a double knit yarn as well so I'm finished and then uh, what I'm supposed to do now is, is cast off because it doesn't have sleeves. So you cast off, it's just got this little cap here in the, so that, uh, what I might do is, is knit two or three rows extra. But this is what the, the sleeve will look like then. So you cast off for the sleeves and then you join again under the arms and you just knit the body. So I think it's a very nice quick knit. I think it's really possible to do this in a week. So, 
and I, I think I did mention it's a free pattern and I think um, that is all I'm going to talk about today I hope uh, that I, I try to talk a little bit faster and not to miss much. I will see when I watch the video um, if I succeeded in that. I'm sure it will get better. Thank you so much for watching. And as I said, I really appreciate every thumbs up and every subscriber and every comment. Thank you for watching and have a lovely week, a lovely weekend and a lovely week. And I hope that you will have plenty of knitting time and crochet time. Bye.